shift in power, I think, really from uh, particularly the states and the Western model across to the Eastern model to a new, really, a Pacific age. A lot of market requirement, especially Asia and Middle East, and there was a many plan, many projects came out. So there was a, a lot of opportunity to develop new tower, tower and by using this uh, proven uh, technical information. I believe that the technical evolution of the tall building is inevitable. And in the last 10 years, we've kind of got this new toy, which is a computer that allows us to imagine all kinds of strange things. And we've almost run amok a bit to where we can design buildings that are, are very outlandish in many respects and frankly make little sense from a sustainable design point of view or from a economics point of view. It's wacky for wacky sake, but we can do it, so we have done that. Technology today might be less of a limitation uh, than perception and maybe design. We moved away from the Western sort of industrialized model into a much more fluid, much more organic shape um, and I, I suppose these are sort of more sculptural ways of considering taller buildings that culminated in a way in some of the problems that were experienced, I think, in Dubai. I'm trying not to pick on any one building, but I, I'll have to point at one because it's, to me, one of the, the landmarks of what I'm describing, and that's the CCTV building in Beijing. While it's uh, easily defended by computer analysis and what have you, the amount of steel in that building is three to four times what would be required for another building of equal height. I think as an engineer, what I find most creative is the marrying of the architecture and the engineering. Even projects like the CCTV towers, you know, enables you to combine such complexity of engineering with simplicity in architecture to create space for so many things to happen. The issue that I think is the most compelling and the most important is the issue of sustainability. Um, so the Commerce Bank by Norman Foster, the Hearst Tower, other buildings that are dealing with the environmental footprint of the very tall building. Move towards a more sustainable approach in terms of how tall buildings are considered both in terms of their location and the technologies that can be used uh, to give them a longer term future. Effectively considering them as a sort of micro cities in a sense. Previously I think uh, the focus on the high rise building is usually maybe just fully offices or, or, or fully residential but now you see a lot of these high rise buildings you have like what Ping Ming say a lot of mixed uses as well and um, I think then the, the focus starts to shift in not so much um, just the building itself because as again um, technology is something that we, we start not to worry too much about. The greatest contributions to the tall building um, are fall maybe more in a programmatic area in what a tall building contains. The tall building, the very tall building, has the potential to create a, such a diverse programmatic juxtaposition that it can be virtually thought of as a city within a city. And that concept is particularly evolving in Asia, that these uh, tall buildings are programmatically extremely diverse. Well, um, from my perspective, I think uh, it's the use of concrete in tall structures. I believe this uh, first thing was the, uh, the, the development of the uh, improvement of the material, especially concrete strengths. The ease with which they're doing it and the rapidity which they're getting these projects built, I think that bodes well for the future.